Wait, can I give you my, your gift now? You have a gift for me? It's not that exciting, and you made me hold on to it. It's just socks because it's you know shoes off. Wait a minute, this is more than just socks. Don't, um, don't what? Are you checking the price? Is this what you actually paid? This is what I actually paid. Ten dollars? Yes. All right, dude. Fun stuff. Thanks for doing this. Uh, I'm still in producer Rick mode. I'm gonna be fun comic in like an hour. <laughs> okay. Good thing the gardeners are here. Yeah. Yeah. So is this podcast with, what's it called, Forever Dog? Or they, you just know them? I don't know if there is a misunderstanding of who you think I know and yeah. why you're doing this. <laughs> and I don't even know who Forever Dog oh, is. Okay. I don't, that's so weird. I don't know why they're involved. Yeah, I don't either. Um, uh, I still need to set some stuff up, but yeah. I guess uh, while we're talking. Yeah, I don't. somebody reached out about you doing this. Oh. You know, I okay, can cool. check the emails and I'm like, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. And then they reached out again. So I'm uh, part of me wanted was going to ask you, but I think I might want to wait until after the, the title screen. Yeah. Yeah. We'll because get into that, that way the theme music comes in and yeah, people yeah. are like, now here's like, like, uh, what's, what are they going to talk about? Right. Backstory. We'll talk yeah. all about the booking. I better stay. Yeah. If I want to figure this stuff <laughs> out. But like, if this is an accident and you and like Forever Dog was like supposed to get your back and Forever Dog f***ed up. No, I don't think it's anything like that. But if it, it is, is. Yeah. All I need from you is the cold open and then feel free whenever you want to go. <laughs> okay. Let me, uh, I'm almost done. I'm going to frame you up. All right. Forever. Oh, f*** me, dude. Theme music. Scoot do. Blabbity blue. Scoot. I'm, I'm good. I think I'm good. All right. hey, do you have HMU here? Do you have no hair and makeup? Um, I'm fine without it. No, I, I don't even have like, I don't even have stuff to do for yourself. Oh, yeah. I usually Nobody's ever asked kit. me that before. No, usually the stuff, the podcast I do, there's usually a, a person Full here. team? Yeah. Not a team, but, you know, vanities. Do you guys make a lot of money on it? No, I'm saying not the, um, not my pod. We don't do it on my podcast. I don't care. Oh, on other podcasts you yeah. do? Yeah. Yeah, Forever Dog probably sets you up with podcasts that like have <laughs> HMUs. And that's Usually. What, that's what leads me to wonder. Yeah. Who's Forever Dog? Right. Who am I? Yeah. And why are you doing this? I don't know. We'll be right back. Sorry. Let's take two. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, dude, you're so funny. Sometimes you're so funny that you make me piss and shit my pants. Hi, this episode is sponsored by Me Undies. Go to MeUndies.com slash Tyso to save 25% off your first order plus free shipping. If you want cool, sexy, comfortable, not sexy, whatever kind of underwear you want, head on over to MeUndies.com slash Tyso for 25% off plus free shipping. Trust me. Your pants, when you, when you poop and pee in your pants and you need new underpants and you don't want you undies, no, 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 you want me undies. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Therapy is fantastic. Why don't you go ahead and make your brain your friend with BetterHelp? Visit betterhelp.com slash Tyso for 10% off your first month. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash Tyso for 10% off your first month. What's that? Tim, so funny. Swipe. Uh, well, we started a couple uh, awkward moments already. You don't know me yet? I'm a big pun guy. Could I pitch you something? Yeah, I'm a big pun guy too, but go ahead. Considering what these awkward moments are, could you call it a sockward moment? Uh, that's not my kind of pun, but yeah, sure. I 
don't wear socks right generally uh especially in the summer i got some slip-ons so i showed up and i i know this is this what's the name of this uh well, take you your shoes off <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh don't uh, and i have my slip-ons i'm fine uh with people seeing my feet my toes right i have great feet but the first thing you said to me was uh, you know, we take, we ask you to take your shoes off, but you have to wear socks. Right. Right. And I don't have socks. You gave me these, which is not really they were my a gift. vibe, but, uh, but I'm curious actually more than anything as to why no bare feet. Right. Is that a, is that like a compulsion you have? Are you worried about, um, you know, foot freaks coming? <laughs> oh, you your think, you think or, I want to have on, you would wear socks because of for sexual reasons well uh are you worried about uh, drawing a mm. fetish audience I, I just the question is why right, the socks right, right um no not not the fetish uh audience well i find that you understand the shoes off right uh generally as as like a housekeeping thing not not trotting in dirt from the street yeah Yes, I understand. Yeah, that. so feet are also a little gross. Mm. Now, not so gross that if you came in without socks, I would throw you out, but gross enough to where I'd be thinking about it the whole time. Like, are you you'd sweating? be looking at my. Can I at least show my my feet? Uh yeah, we'll blur it. But yeah, <laughs> okay. Because, I mean, that's a good. It foot. is a really good foot. Um, long toes. Well maintained. Yeah, no, you're just touching them. No, you're just touching them. Smells. So I will wipe stuff good. down now. And I just that. showered. You could. I mean, my hair is a little, still maybe a little wet. So anyhow, I just wanted to acknowledge that. Make sure people don't a think these are my socks, which they are now, and b that I'm ashamed of my my naked feet. Okay. Um, you asked me a question. I on this podcast typically it's the way it goes. Yeah. And it's, I, I thought it was more of an in conversation. You ask, I ask. Okay. Um, what kind of pun guy are you? Well, gulp, 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 gulp. Uh, just a, a, a lover of them, an appreciator of them. Uh, I think they come out spontaneously. Yeah, yeah. That's my favorite kind. I don't think there's not, there's not, you know, ones that I think about too hard. Uh, my friend Doug Lusenhop. You might know Doug. <laughs> no. oh, wait, is uh, Doug, Doug. DJ Doug Pound. I do know that. Yeah. Everybody knows Doug. Uh, he, he'll he have a show sometimes. A pun, Could you bring this back? You want it closer? Oh, yeah. That's okay. a big difference. Oh, I should be on cans. Then I would know. I'll be. I'll let you know. I'm, I'm going to be soft spoken until maybe things get heated. We'll mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, should I stop chewing gum? I am not noticing it. At I the think moment. it's a cool look there is the, the a cool there chewing. is a cool confidence with gum chewing yeah. i actually do gum chew acting i'm pretty good at doing it without a piece in your mouth yeah it just helps me feel and also a lot of times i'll tuck it tuck it up here yeah that way i don't have to keep but but Doug it, has it, a, the sound is is bad when it happens yeah i'm gonna <clears throat> i'm gonna do this you ever do this you you stick the gum in the top i haven't but i get your it. water bottle yeah then it's there for later mm-hmm um, Doug will have a show sometimes in LA that's uh, a pun contest. Have bring people up on stage, wow. get suggestions from the audience. I don't know if I'm right now in a um, in a comfortable enough place yet yeah, yeah. for puns to just be generated. But I imagine if this goes well, we're going to get some. Yeah, uh, I, I also would like to let you know I appreciate the awareness of not being in a place to shine in certain skill sets that you yeah. may have. We don't know each other, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, the um, uh, who who is the, the the dog? Who are the people? Yes, <laughs> Forever Dog mm -hmm. is a podcast. These podcast networks, um, and I think what happened was they might have been uh, because Office Hours, my podcast. Yes. Tom Sharpling's best show. Uh, we'll put it in great, po great podcast. Um, that's their network. And I think maybe they were pitching me to other podcasts 
when we joined up with them. So that's that maybe is what happened. Uh, they I suggested- stopped myself from doing something because I'm not comfortable enough yet. But I was going to do something that I think I can do now that I'm telling mm-hmm. you. I was going to go. I was going to be loud with my O because it made oh. sense. Yeah, and I stopped. Right, because it's an interesting story. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, it, it it makes sense because they reached yeah. out. You must have signed up with them. A, a dip, right. Blah, 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 and because and, then they reached back out. They said, hey, we tried to do this before. They reached out to James Corden and uh, Charlie Rose, who's back. James Corden, Charlie Rose, yeah. and Rick Glassman, the <laughs> and big Glassman, three, the Holy yeah. Trinity. Rick Glassman's a real like NPR uh, news name. Thanks. I'm Rick Glassman, and I'm joined by Tim Heidecker. Yeah, that yeah. is. You know, you're not related <clears throat> to a Sharon Glassman, are you? I mean, you could be. I could be. I took my um, forever. What's it called? Uh, forever dog. <laughs> <laughs> You know the time, like in the two, early two thousands, if you were working in this town, a lot of companies, a lot of production companies, had monkey in their their name. There'd be like Gear Monkey Post. I never noticed that, but I do notice that back in those days, when you would see the production title cards at the end mm-hmm. of something, a lot of times it was either a baby crying yeah. or like, <laughs> yeah, or, 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 or a, a monkey, monkey going, going <laughs> yeah, which sounds like that rock and roll song, <laughs> or that's a wah, wah. oh yes. But what I was going to say is I took my uh, Ancestry thing. Ancestry.com. I, they're not an advertiser, okay. so I'll bleep the last, uh-huh. this, you know, dot .com, bleep mm-hmm. that as well. I didn't give my real name. Interesting. <laughs> That's None of your business. Yeah, So really. I'm not going to give it. Right. But a first cousin messaged me, not knowing who I was. I was like, oh my gosh, we have so much, so many people in common. Who are you? Where are you from? Yeah. To this day. Until this day, never told her. So you're pretending to be, you're almost sort of pretending to be somebody else. I'm pretending to not be me more than I'm pretending to be somebody else. I have no interest in knowing anything about who my relatives were. I can't see any value in that. Really? What are you going to do with that? Well, what if you found out that a great, great uncle of yours was gay? You might be gay. Cool. You, You don't know. I don't know. Don't need to know. I don't know. You see that? What's that? Finding Pun your intended? roots? Yes. Always. <laughs> always intended. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With that Henry Gates show that Finding Your Roots, he has celebrities on. Oh, my gosh. I didn't. So we I have never a different that. media diet. Yeah. Gates. Gates. Right. No. He was the guy that Obama had a beer with. Remember this guy? Mark Marin did as well. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Yeah. The Forever Dog tries uh, to set you with him? Uh, I guess you don't need him and Charlie. Rose. I had him on my show. I had him on my show. And I, and I, 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 uh, I've done his show a few times over the years. You're, it's been a long, long time, though. Mark and I are becoming friends after all these years. What, do you, how comfortable would you feel doing a pun with him? I don't think he's a pun guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is he? No, he's no. not a very no. pun guy. <laughs> pun intended. I have a pun character. How pun is it? Gulp, gulp, gulp. It's mm. so pun. Guess what happened? I just, the gum, you didn't go, push it yeah, down. Yeah, it didn't stick. You have to push it. Do you have any... Um, Tape? Gorilla glue or something? If this was the early 2000s, I'd have monkey glue. Monkey glue. Is that a pun? No, it's just a reference to monkey talk we had earlier. Uh, I'll do my pun character later. I think we should still be getting to know each other. I Can I just... One, I don't know, you might consider this, I don't know if this is a technical pun, but it's a joke, a punny joke. You know the game Settlers of Settlers of Catan? I have heard the game. I, yeah. I, I've never played it. I'm working, uh, starting a group called Settlers for Catan, and it's a group that uh, that settles for the comedy of Chris Catan. Oh my gosh. And I was recently having we, a conversation with somebody about Chris Catan. We, we get together and we, we just kind of go through the characters we like and the movies of his that we deal with and, and settle for. Interesting. Now, I don't, some I don't think you deal with and well, some it's of like, them you, you like. Know, if, if you settle for something, it's not your first choice. Yes. Night of the Roxbury. <laughs> is that him? Yeah. Do you settle for that? That that one is high on the list. We appreciate yeah. that one quite a bit. We're happy that one's <clears throat> out there. What is it called? Settlers for Catan? Yeah, Settlers for Catan. I like it. Yeah. It's cute. The conversation and mean. Why? Because well, because poor Chris Catan doesn't need to be made fun of. 
Oh, I didn't know you were making fun of him. I, I think you're making fun of him when you're when you're talking about some kind of group that settles for somebody's humor. I feel like most of the people that watch this podcast settle for it. I don't think this is anybody's favorite podcast. <laughs> right, right. You know? Yeah. Do you listen to any other podcasts besides, I would assume you have to listen to this. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. I'll tell you. Yeah. Put, um, put something on. I listen to armchair experts sometimes. Dax Shepard, Monica Padman. Uh, I listen to Smart List. Really? No. That's the first time of a guy that, that, that doesn't want somebody to judge him. Okay. You're, no, I mean, I've heard it. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. people have listened to it. I think it's stupid. I can't believe the numbers that these, I mean, I think people might, a lot of this stuff might autoplay. No. No, you think there's a, a rabid, there is a rabid fan base for that stuff. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I don't think they just autoplay. I think that's actually a wild <laughs> These <are numbers>. hypothesis. Okay. <laughs> These are, Why do your numbers do so well? It's just a lot more autoplays yeah, than the I, other one. You know, people forget, set it and forget it. People love podcasts. Yeah. I mean, uh, where? how do you listen to them? In cars and on the, on the exercise machines? Exercise machine almost exclusively. Yeah. If I'm riding a bike, riding on a treadmill. Right. <clears throat> We getting wanna, over a little bit we, of a... We don't want to talk about that. We do, because I'm happy to talk about it. Um, happy to talk about it. <laughs> I was just trying to get your attention. <clears throat> <clears throat> um, that's pretty much the only time I listen to a podcast. I'm asking all the questions. I want to acknowledge that. Yeah. And I want to... We can shift that energy anytime you want. But I'm a, I don't know much about you, so I'm, I'm a genuinely... Uh, generously... Somebody's talking about you. Generously... Uh, uh, curious cat. So Are you, it might naturally happen. Did you know that when your head itches, it means somebody's talking about you? No. I thought that's the ears. That's an old wives tale. All of it is. Oh, so this one is, is factual. That one is real. <laughs> well, it used, it used to be, a, 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 it was the whole face, anywhere in your face. Uh -huh. And then they made it ears because like, oh, I, it's like, um, I could, you, that's your ears hearing something, but it's not true. But it's, it's it the morphin comp complex okay. that goes through. Cool. Yeah. This Your adrenals some, push it out. This is some real uh, Rogan-style pop science going on here. Have you ever been on Joe Rogan? No. If you were to go on Joe Rogan and Joe were to ask you what you think about stuff. Stuff. What do you think about, you know? <laughs> pop, pop science? Pop science. You know, like, what do you think? Like, you know, getting enough sunlight in the morning? That's a big one right now. That's really I've heard with, that with one. Huberman. That is, people are not supposed to wear sunglasses. Supposed to look in the... If you wear sunglasses... You might as well not even leave your. You might as well right. stay in you bed. Might as well just eat McDonald's. Eat McDonald's. Have you right. seen that movie Super Size Me? Yeah. Have you seen it twice? I don't think I would have seen it twice. Well, you might as well watch it again if you're not going <laughs> to wear sunglasses. Okay. Right. Yeah, you're supposed to wear. You're not supposed to wear sunglasses. You're supposed to get outside. You're also supposed to eat a lot of meat, but you're All, also most well. If some people eat only meat. You're either but, supposed to eat only meat or don't eat a lot of meat. Right. There is a, where they say meat should be considered a side. One fourth of your plate at most is meat. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there. You're supposed to hate, hate uh, transgenders or you're supposed to really want to protect them. Right. That's, that's the main, that's the main three. Uh, that's a pretty uh, a stoicism. Sto sto stoicism. What, like what makes a man a man? No, it's a whole... Uh, quasi religion kind of philosophy that I don't know much about. So I shouldn't talk more about well, I'm, I'm interested. Stoicism is what these people are in, are into simple. But uh, what was the other one is uh saunas. Now people say you're supposed to do saunas. Yeah. And, but you know what else you're supposed to do? Cause sauna is hot, but everything, everything, everything is like a pair of socks mm -hmm. is in pairs. Right. You're supposed to, you're supposed to take ice baths and you know what they, you know what the ice baths people think about the people who go into cryotherapy chambers. Uh, they're weak. They're weak. The wind? No, no. You need to be in the water. Oh, I did that cryotherapy thing once. Where you stand in a in a yeah, I, I've done it chamber. A lot. Yeah, and you just get cold for thirty seconds. Three and a half minutes. Three and a half minutes. That's yeah. how. No, mine couldn't have been that long. They say minimum two and a half minutes, Maybe maximum three and a half minutes. Yes, yeah, it, it was horrible. Yeah, horrible. But you get out of there and you feel really good. I do at least. I don't think there's any. I think. I'm a believer in Advil. 
Ibuprofen. Yeah, ibuprofen. Uh, Which is a rap gum. lyric, actually. Um, do you remember in the, in the late 90s where everyone was bragging about being profen? Profen? They were, yeah. <laughs> profen? Uh-huh. No, I don't remember that. A lot of Range Rovers. I be roven. Oh, I be profen. When you come oh, around, okay, dig cool. a lax, rex, he smokes I'm it. not a very educated man on, on rap music. Got it. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I'm a pretty simple, I, I don't, I try not to, you know, I try to eat pretty good, but not great. I had McDonald's yesterday. Have you seen... <laughs> was he asking about the supersize me again? Yeah, I did. I had a conversation with somebody who was very upset about that movie because it gave McDonald's such a bad name. And it's like, you know, McDonald's isn't great for you. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't eat it all the time, but mm -hmm. it's no worse than everything else. It is. I mean, it's, it's no worse. I mean, there's better, much better things <clears throat> you can eat, but I mean, it's no worse than the other fast foods. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't eat fast food anymore. Well, I don't think you should live that way. I think, I mean, if it so happens that you don't eat fast food for circumstantial reasons, it doesn't come up. But to live your life strictly to say, I don't eat fast food anymore, feels like you're depriving yourself of something that can be fun and and enriching in its own small way. Right. So I feel, and apologies for being defensive, um, you asshole, <laughs> but I feel you're projecting that on me because... Well, me saying that makes me feel better about my choices, but the brain is fucking wild, man. <laughs> That's what Rogan talks about too. But I don't eat fast food, but I'm not like wanting it and and depriving myself from it. Gold, gold, I am now like a bit grossed out by it. It happened again. It happened again. Do you want me to get you a, a gum? A I gum think plate? just a tissue paper of some kind. Yeah. Toilet paper, maybe a roll of toilet paper. Too much toilet paper <laughs> for this situation. I would think so. Are you gonna want that gum again? No, I'm gonna say goodbye to it because now it's just it, the I, the essence of the gum is now in the in the uh, smart smart Why water. Don't drop, yeah, like a. There we go. Fold that over without touching it. How do you feel about a nose blow hand wash by me? <clears throat> a what? So you you said uh, the other yesterday that you had COVID a, a week ago. You're all clear, but you gave me the option to get out of this. Yeah. So enough time has passed um, to where my doctor told me I'm not contagious. Yeah. Um, which is uh, not to say that this podcast isn't, because it might not be anybody's first choice, but people are addicted. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, I still wanted to give you the choice because even though the doctor says I'm not contagious, some people are a little bit more sensitive to that type of thing. <clears throat> and I could, I am one of those people sometimes, sure. depending, I, I'd vibe it out. I also feel like somebody telling me that offers me, disclosure offers me comfort. Um, uh, I have an analogy. You have a what? Uh, I have an Anal analogy. An, an analogy? An, an analogy? Yeah. Okay. I thought you said you have an allergy. Um, probably. <laughs> um, when making love or fucking mm -hmm. somebody and they're like, uh, I'm clean, you don't need a condom. That would make me a little bit like, hmm. Yeah. As opposed to, I'm clean. But. Wear a condom. Yeah. That makes me, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, still, until we take tests. Sure. But like, oh, I this person is responsible enough to where it makes me feel other choices they make. They don't eat fast food all the time. You know what I mean? Right. So uh, I wanted to disclose. And it was a fair thing to do. And I uh, said, I'm cool, man. I I don't, I'm not parent. I'm not, I wouldn't, I don't have anything against people that are more sensitive to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I personally am a little more laissez-faire when it comes to the big diseases. What about the smaller ones? The smaller ones I'm much more concerned about. Right. <laughs> what precautions do you take for the smaller ones? Uh, I, I, you don't see this now, but I'm covered in band-aids, pre pre uh, preventive, uh, preventative band -aids. Yeah, pro prophylactic band-aids. Right. To, to arm avoid, it, basically. Yeah, yeah. I believe there are several <clears throat> hundreds, if not thousands of microscopic holes. Well, there are pores. Mm-hmm. And as many pores as I can cover, the better. 
Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. That's why I'm wearing all this denim on a 86 degree day. Right. Did you ride here on a motorcycle? No, I did not. I feel weird because there's two ways this could look. Okay. This could look uh, George Harrison. Uh, the George Abbey, Harrison we know. George Harrison. Beatles. George Abbey Harrison? Road cover. Mm -hmm. If you look at that cover, he's beautifully, we'll put it up here. beautifully decked in denim. Yeah. Or the opposite, the polar opposite of that, Leno. Jay? Jay. So right. I don't, I feel comfortable in this color. This it's, shade assuming of it's Abbey Road. Yes, but if people start saying, and they will now. Could uh, you do a good Jay Leno? I don't think so. I, I, I'm Jay Leno. I, mean, I don't know. It's, it's sort of like this, right? You just yeah. do this? No, you know, he asks a lot of times. He's hey, wondering you know, if people heard know. about something. I burn my fucking face off, you know? What the fuck are we doing over here? I like cause. I like cars. You know, if they should give me the Tonight Show. I'll do it without, without writers. Yeah, the stuff that happened with Conan O'Brien isn't really... Now, now you're getting into Marge Simpson. I was thinking more Jiminy Glick. Or Jiminy Glick, yeah. Um, By the way, Marge Short, gotta be... I, I'm so glad that article came out. I don't know if you saw the article. I did see I'm people so glad saying, is he funny? He, he's, it's somebody had the balls to say this guy is terribly unfunny. Yeah, this is the article you're talking about, right? <laughs> yeah, yes. I'm just... Kidding, yes. But you did see this article. I did see that, which I described to my friend as the longest YouTube comment I've ever <laughs> seen. But what you were joking about, like you were satirizing this as a talking point? Yes. Or that he's not funny? I'm both. I'm satirizing. I, I kind of, it's, you don't want to give these topics air. Because then the trolls that's win? The entire point of that article is to draw in us to click on it and talk about it. Well, but I can't I, help it because, of course, Martin Short is a n international treasure. I know you gals know this one. <laughs> Thank you for being a friend. Travel, Travel down the road. <laughs> Look, I'm really thrilled to see you both, but it's not your time, is it? <laughs> Thank you. I'll let you know. I can't say national treasure because he's Canadian. Now, I don't know if this is a pun, but going back to this dog motif... Clifford is a great movie. The, again, this is a coincidence. Well, <laughs> so a just a reminder to us, um, Tim Heidecker, Rick Glassman, with Martin Short in the middle, and then the, the caption is, is Martin Short gay? And we'll see, we'll get people right. to click on it. Or Heidecker says Martin Short is not funny. Ooh. I did say that years ago about Bill Murray, though, and that got me in a bit of hot water on my... I didn't. I, I didn't say he was not funny. I just thought the the oh. sort of oh, please take the call. I turned mine into airplane that's, that's mode. That's actually but. perfect timing. It is now. Is Bill Murray funny? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is sure. What was but what was the, the topic? My top my point of view point. on it is just the this over a little bit of an overrated quality or a little bit of a. Uh, um, and I shouldn't bring this up because all I'm going to do is reignite uh, Firestorm. We have another thumbnail option now. But uh, the, you, what what irked me always was sort of the... Uh, you talking about Jaleel White? The cult... No, irked me. Did I do that? Whoopsies. Urkel, bitch. Was the, the cult of Bill... The people, the guys that would wear like the Bill Murray shirt. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, I've got shirts with my face on it. Can I have one? Uh, I don't have my merch with me. Well, I'm sure we I just have to go to timmeidecker.com yeah, slash store slash and you can get one that mailed to us Absolutely. right away. Absolutely. So maybe, I, you know, I have uh, complicated feelings about it. I also know just too much about him. I know he's kind of not, not a nice guy, you know what I mean? Like, So some of the mystique about him kind of gets, uh, the water gets a little poisoned. Hmm. Who? Uh, what was John Samos' wife's name? Uh, something Jan Romaine Stamos. Stimo Jan Stamos? Something Romaine Stamos. Rebecca Romaine. Rebecca Romaine. Um, would you say Re Rebecca Romaine salad would be? Oh, <laughs> pun that one was intended. <laughs> would you say that? See, now I'm loosening up, and you're going to get a lot more. Yeah, pun intended. A lot more. That you were loosening the water bottle top. No, that's fun. That's just you the think a lot magic of things of the are universe. Do you think Rebecca Romaine? There's a lot of mystique about her as well. I have no, I, I don't know anything about her. She was in the X Men movie. Yes, That's she played Mystique. Ah, ah. And we're both doing that now. I'm actually feeling we're we're both loosening up now. 
This is good. Let's not get too loose. I don't want to get crazy. I'm just saying it feels nice to finally yeah, loosen we're up opening a little up. bit. Now, you and Bill Murray have beef. Not, um, not it's a one-sided beef, but beef nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Um Speaking what, of McDonald's. Mm-hmm. Now we're going. Yeah. <laughs> now, <clears throat> you know, you said something to me that I want to um and maybe I edit this out. I don't know if people, there's weird sayings you can't say anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, shine a magnifying glass on, which is when you were talking about the Martin Short stuff, mm-hmm. you said, I'm kidding. Now, if I know you and I don't, I know that you love deconstruction and satirizing. I'm, 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 I'm born from this as well. Don't believe me? Ask the dishes. But when somebody like, you and I'm assuming says something like, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Do you feel that you are waving a flag? And would you at least rather not have to say that because the person opposite you knows or feel the need not to say that so you could keep digging in? Does that question make sense? Yes, it's <gasps> contextual. It's all in uh um, <clears throat> the yeah, it's it's dependent on the situation. I don't know you that well. Mm-hmm. I don't know your how your audience is going to react to what I'm saying. It's and all if, just in, automatic in a, downloads. In a, it's, it's autoplay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, you're catching me in a place where I'm not in control of the entire uh, mm-hmm. situation here. I'm not directing this. I'm not writing right. this. So I will, I will try not to overstate when I'm kidding and hope that it just sort of naturally... Uh, but I, my, te- my, my humor often tends to be a bit dry and a bit... <laughs> I, you know when people say they add an and after they've said perfectly what they want to say? I have a bit about how when you do an and and there's two types of people. There's the people that now need to find something. Yeah, that, they that was what happened to me. Or I, just concede I added an and. Yeah. I, I just concede Because I said my humor tends to be a bit dry and sardonic. Yeah. Right. Whatever. But now you have but to. But dry is all you need to say. It's putting a gun to your head yeah. conversationally. Uh, I could say uh, my, my humor tends to be a bit dry and whimsical Mm -hmm. that wouldn't work have you seen the tom hanks movie where he goes uh and that's all i have to say about that (laughs) yeah is that gotta gotta be gump prop i uh yeah how many times does tom hanks do a southern accent in a movie has he done more than gump i didn't know that was a southern accent i just thought he he was just like he was cuckoo yeah he was short a few yeah he's from alabama right that's right that's right. That's right. Um, so uh, you not being in control. Also, I want to acknowledge something that was already stated, but um, I'm not fully, you know, I'm, I'm distracted with a little bit of congestion. Yeah. And <clears throat> I'm actually feeling a bit bummed about it at the moment because this conversation is something that I... I'm very exciting, excited and wanting to have with you. And I just don't feel all my faculties are there. Yeah. But I'm going to try. Well, you have to just man up. I don't know if that's appropriate to say anymore. You just have to, like, live with it. Yeah. Push through it. Absolutely. Not but, dwell on it. Okay. Because you're dwelling on it. Do you ever feel <laughs> that by acknowledging something, it takes it out of your mind so it makes it easier to be present? That That's fair. And I'll give you that. This episode is sponsored by Me Undies. Now, I wanted to try these underpants before I did the commercial, but I won't be getting them for a couple of days, and I don't want to lie to my goblin, so I want to tell you, I have not yet tried these. I've only gone to the website. Once I try on the underpants next commercial, I'll let you know personally how I feel about them, but I do know if you don't like them, Me Undies will cover the cost. I do hear really good things about them. I placed an order for a matching set of underpants for me and my girlfriend. If I had them uh, in time, I would have been wearing them with my girlfriend and we probably would have been, she would have been topless and we would have blurred her nipples and I would have been um, completely topless as well and I would have blurred my nipples. Now hear me out for a second. Okay, so we got boxer trunks, briefs, bikini bottoms, hipster, which kind of just look like briefs, but like shorter. Look at this, spider webs for Halloween. I wouldn't wear the spider webs. I would wear this Yoda. If I had the confidence to show my legs like this, small, medium, large, extra large, two, I mean, they got all the sizes. Okay, here's what I want to see here. Look at this. They got Scooby-Doo. 
Yeah, these are fun, man. They got lots of different styles, and they have them in whatever kind of underpants you want. Head on over to MeUndies.com slash Tyso for 25% off your first order, plus free shipping. That's MeUndies.com slash Tyso for 25% off your first order and free shipping. MeUndies, comfort from the outside in. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Have you been wanting to get into therapy, but it feels like too much of a to-do? I could relate. I've been in therapy for a while, so that isn't too much of a to-do for me. But if I'm looking for a new podiatrist, or if I'm looking for a frame person, or I'm thinking about taking piano lessons, where do I go? That's where BetterHelp really helps. BetterHelp is entirely online. You take a brief questionnaire and they will match you with a licensed therapist. You could change it any time until you find the therapist that you want to continually work with. I have said on my podcast before that answers are relatively easy. The questions are hard. And that's where therapy has really helped me out. Like sometimes when you understand why you're triggered, you're still affected, but it makes it easier to not kind of get drunk in emotion. Also, it's nice to be able to talk to somebody who it's their job, so you're not worried about draining them. And also you're getting advice from somebody who kind of understands as opposed to going to a family member or friend who, as all humans do, have a bias, but they might not be as aware of that. And they'd be giving you advice that isn't maybe necessarily the best advice to take. So make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Tyso for 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tyso. So uh, I'll start this by giving an example. You said to me in the email, you're like, and then it got to the point where you're like, uh, hey, I'll come. Just, you know, we don't, let's not hug and kiss. Right. And I said. Which is, which was, I'm sure received as a, a friendly little joke. Easy. It was you, uh, it was a call and response mm-hmm. while doing it playfully. Yeah. And for that, I say, you know. I'm a great emailer. You're a great emailer. I wrote back and I said something like, uh, not a problem. We don't have to hug. Uh, I do have a kissing segment. Uh, we'll figure something out. Uh, like one of us closes her mouth or yeah. something. But I, a joke back. Right. Did no, you, no reply. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I didn't write it for the reply. Oh, okay. I wrote it because uh, for right or wrong, if either, when somebody plays with me, that which is what you were doing, it's fun to play back. I don't feel the need to. Uh, opposite from fast food, I don't want it. I just wanted to like throw a little joke back. Um, I didn't need a reply. I didn't think anything of it really. But did you know I was joking? Of course. Right. Um, my girlfriend asked me, uh, hey, did you cancel the podcast? Because I said, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, I, I, uh, I gave him a heads up. Uh, he said this, I said this. And she goes, oh, I hope he knows you're joking. <laughs> and it wasn't even a thought in my head that you wouldn't know I was joking. No, yeah. I mean, the idea that you have a segment <gasps> where you kiss already is silly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that you would insist upon that right. after all the disclosure. Even if there were that segment to then still need to do it. Right. But it did raise. Well, we're comics. We get it. <laughs> yeah. We get no. This is this is, what, right, this is this is what, it's in our it's blood. What we do it's in our blood. It's our, it's our love language. Joking or not, I agree. I agree. No, I'm I not, agree. I'm, I mean, I, I'm not joking. But I mean, it, that's a silly term, but it is also a perfect yeah. term. Yeah, it's uh, it's um, you know, guys busting balls mm-hmm. is uh, you know, is is a way of showing affection at times. But also sometimes it's too much and it bothers somebody. Right. So I didn't even think anything of it. I just wrote back, you know, I was doing my thing. I was watching Game of Thrones again. Finally. Fourth go. (laughs) Wow, that's a lot. But it did offer the question, is he know I'm joking? And I knew the answer. I assumed the answer, of course. But like, what if he doesn't? So I wasn't worried about it. Because even if you didn't know I was joking, there's no harm in this. You would still get here and, and set your boundary again. I'm not kissing you, man. Sure. But that question is something that I have to ask myself, something that I became more aware about in the past few years, which is, do they know I'm joking when it's something that's so obvious as a performer to not for somebody to not know we're joking is a is a risk. But we have to accept that and know that some people won't know and we can't tell them because it ruins it for everybody else. Yes. Do you have any observations and skill sets that you've learned that you could define of cost benefit and how to help navigate that? Uh, uh, Cost benefit and navigate. These are good words. Um, That's, 
uh, me, that's me thinking, it's st- me stalling and also keeping the conversation going. We do Throwing- we do an animation on this that when yeah. people are, when I could tell that somebody's gears are turning, yeah. we do a thing on, where we push them on the forehead and it turns an oval and then inside yeah. is either monkeys playing the cymbals yeah. <laughs> or, you know, yeah. gears turning, but yeah. monkeys are on them going up and down yeah. like a... Yeah. Well, we I think I've resigned myself to letting go of worrying about people liking it or getting it or knowing what's not what's funny. The only thing I do is when I have the opportunity to do a show like this or Mark Marin or or any kind of press, my tendency of the past several years uh, is to just be pretty straightforward yeah. and talk about my work in an honest way that's not uh obfuscating the see i'm i'm stretching now that's a good word uh and and adding further confusion Mm -hmm. so it'd be pretty matter of fact about what we're doing and um and but i do feel like more and more the work gets uh taken out of context it gets there's there's a i've noticed a a very literalism tendency in in the world, thanks to I think TikTok and Instagram, and uh, a lot of my work, a lot of the satirical things I've done gets ta- gets taken as uh, at face value, mm-hmm. as if it is what we're pretending it supposed right. to be, and then that gets taken. You know, someone grabs a clip out of context, puts it up on their site, uh, and then the, people go crazy with like, how how could this person be this way you know as if i'm a, as if whoever i'm you know parodying or or making fun of uh is a real person um when you see something like that how much of you likes that people believe it how much um it's interest it's interesting i i don't think you know the other at the same time while we're not ever making something to uh intentionally create that confusion we also uh want i mean we're making it for entertainment you know we're making it to entertain my audience and because it's because it's something we want to do whoever i'm doing it with it's like the idea comes and you want to do it you want to make it as good as possible and put it out there in a way that you feel good about so you know the the reaction to it is 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 not intended to to isolate and to confuse necessarily i understand the intention isn't and i used to rely on intention we're like hey that's not what i meant um but like you said the purpose is to entertain like you want people to be in on it um i used to get um critique or praise both saying that like i people like Rick doesn't care that he makes things awkward or makes people uncomfortable. Yeah. Like he's trying to do that. And though that's an operational cost, I want everybody to know why and what I'm doing. Right. I just, part of the craft is letting them in on it sooner than later. Yeah. Uh, if Unless, you know, you're yeah, trying to build that. Yeah, there's a technique to it. Yeah. There should be, it shouldn't just be entirely, isol- it shouldn't be entirely unaccess- inaccessible. You know, and the, the 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 results are that I have an audience, you have an audience of enough people that enjoy that, right? So a lot of my audience, um, and I've heard I I hear this tangibly because it's comments on the podcast, and I've heard this a lot because I do stand up. Um, a lot of people, excuse me, I burp so much I can't believe I haven't burped yet. But continue. Do you, you don't have, you'll I don't do have to, do. it's not happening right now, but I, I, I mean, if we're, if I was drinking a LaCroix or something, we'd be in Burp City. I do have sparkling water. We can get that going if you want, but I'm okay. Okay. Continue your thought. Um, either didn't get Rick at first, love him now. These are the, of course, the ones sure. that end with a nice thing or hated him. Um, this isn't just something that I've seen a, a, a bit to where I'm like, oh, this has happened a lot. It's, it's so prevalent. And uh, my only deduction is when they first saw me, they saw an episode unlike this where it was a lot of like they taking what I'm doing very at face value. Um, and I don't like that. 
Um, I don't like it because like there are some people where if they miss, oh, this guy's not funny. But then if some people to do stuff, they miss, not only are they not funny, it's so misunderstood that he's a bad guy. Yes. Well, I get a ton of that. Yeah. I get a ton of that. Uh, but we, we always have to, and, and I talk about this a lot. I'm very, I'm very aware of the comments because I think it's interesting to look at and I'm just like everybody else online. I, I, I consume in the social media the way everybody else or all of us deranged people do. Uh, it's interesting to me, but I always have to remember and you should remember that who are the people that comment on things publicly, especially of course. negatively. Of course. You know, uh, the, they can't, they, they generally can't be there. I don't know anybody in my life. I've, I've great friends, family, great people around me. I don't know anybody who's ever commented on anything. <laughs> I, I, I have publicly, you know what I mean? Of course. So, and no, I mean, listen, if, if, if you're, if that's how you enjoy, you know, that's how you enjoy, enjoy being part of a community. Sure. But it just seems silly and it, and it seems a reflection of that person's character. Yeah. Uh, you know, to go on and, and, and what, what's he, what are you saying this for and who are you saying it? To? Yeah. There was a, there was a comment the other day on one of our episodes that was like, and it was, it was this, I don't know if you saw the Bill Maher club random spoof that I did of, uh, mm -mm. oh yeah, you yeah, well, it's, it's some of my yeah. finer work with, uh, we did, have you seen the club random show? Uh, I've seen clips of club random. Yeah. I happen to watch Bill Maher show. I've only seen clips of club random. Yeah. You gotta, okay. so we, me and Fred Armisen did a, I saw uh, the uh, thumbnail. I was yeah. looking up some of your club yeah. random, uh, um, the, uh, uh, your podcast Office stuff. Hours, yeah. Uh, I saw that one and, so and we did uh, a pretty, a pretty, I would say faith, <gasps> faithful re, you know, mm -hmm. Uh, parody of that show. Uh, but somebody under that said something like, uh, my problem is where's the funny? Yeah. Yeah. And Tim and Eric's show was the least funny show ever made. And I don't understand, you know, and it's like, until well, this moment, I honestly thought you did South park. No, <laughs> no, no, I wish. Okay. Um, so like, I, I don't know what to do with that guy. You know, I mean, what he, he doesn't, he, he has a problem. Yeah. So, so he, he states that he has a problem. Yeah. And he that's says, where's the funny. The problem is, and I, uh, I, so it doesn't change the, what, what I do. It's just, it's fascinating to me that so, that person's out there communicating publicly that way. The negative comments typically don't affect my self-worth or trigger me or even make me sad um, because I'm either not for them or they didn't get it. Yeah. Um, the, re the thing I don't like um, is when I'm doing something that I know hit the right beats and it still didn't translate mm -hmm. or when it doesn't to whomever it doesn't to, how could I have, how could I have, made it so on there's two ends of the spectrum right there's me being a completely believable and then there's the other end is like winking like yes. literally saying by the way this is not mm -hmm. real i think depending on what the bit is it has to ride along that spectrum somewhere and what i found that the 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 craft of it is is navigating when you go a little bit closer to the wink for a moment and at what moment and then go away from it to let people at least question. Yes, is this real? Sure. As opposed to knowing it is when it isn't, or right. vice versa. I agree. And and there's yes, the, you you again, you have to. There should be jokes in all these mm -hmm. things. There should be or jokes that you think are funny. Yeah. And and certainly or commentary on the thing you're making fun yeah, of. Yeah, you can't just go and just make a pure replica of something that you want to make fun of or do something totally uh, isolating. Uh, f as a performance art piece, like I, I don't, I don't really want to do that either. And of course, you can always learn from, you know, you can always get better and do better. You're so good at it. Um, I also think it's a superpower of mine. I think that, f funny or not, being able to, to 
execute something the way I envision it is like a, is something I'm proud of. Yeah. The challenge is, is recognize, I guess what I'm looking for to learn from you is when do you know how much to stay on this side mm -hmm. and just like, when people see something and like, oh, this is real. Sometimes I'm like, great, you know, great dramatic performance. Good job, Rick. <laughs> Sometimes like, no, this is a fucking joke. Like right. I have things that at the end says written, directed by Rick Glassman and they still think it was real. Right. Like, what are you doing? So um, when you have someone like Fred Armisen on mm -hmm. who, uh, you know, one of the greatest ever to do this. Yeah. Do you direct, is part of your conversation directing, hey, I want people to know, I want people to understand this is satire. I want people to know or when I want them to know or do you just let that person do it? How do you match the tone with him other than you matching him, if you have this vision of, here's how I want it to look. Yeah, I think the only direction I kind of gave Fred on the Bill Maher thing was, um, I'm gonna, uh, uh, me being Bill Maher, I'm gonna contradict and undermine everything you say. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is. Like that's my prime agenda. I'm excited to watch this. And you're going to just try to bear with it and not be rude and get through it without causing, without, you know, adding more fuel to the fire. Is that direction because if he added fuel to the fire, it would make it seem fake or it yeah, just yeah, allows that, you to uh, play deeper? That's a little bit, but it, but the reality of it is if you watch Bill Maher's show, it, it doesn't, most like, mostly it doesn't get combative because most people, people they're just kind of like, I, I don't know. Right. Like, I don't right, really right, want right, to right, right. get into it. Like, it's like an awkward environment. He's very intimidating and very you know, kind of just dismissive and, and high and dr and drinking. And so it's almost like you're just like having a conversation with your My drunk brother. dad oh. or, you know, or whoever, where you're just like, I just don't want to, I don't want to get into this. And can I just promote my show? You know, that's really <laughs> what it feels like. So that's really all. And then, but Fred and I have such a, uh, we play off each other very well, I think. And, and there was a lot of laughter and a lot of stopping and starting and, and, but mostly it was just, joyful silly improv where I, I love the on the show i do on cinema i get to also be this brute shit person mm -hmm. you know bad guy and i get to be abusive and uh combative and and it's all pretend and uh if i have a good partner doing that who's like you know the the beta in that situation or sort of the receiver of that um you know it's it's very fun and as long as I'm pro pro also projecting myself to be kind of an idiot too. You're saying being an idiot when playing the alpha. Yeah. 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 I mean, you can't just, you can, those characters can't win. Do you know Lamorne Morris? No. Um, black guy from New Girl. Did I say that? Black guy from a Fox show. Yeah. He, uh, uh, we had a conversation about, because we both like playing uh, alphas, but uh, very unaware. And is mm -hmm. that because it's a redeeming quality to like, oh, he's like, he's a fool. Yeah. It's still a heel. Is that why you like playing it or yeah. are you just funny playing dumb? Uh, um, it's funny playing, you know, obnoxious and uh, uh, caught up in my own uh, sense of self-importance, you know, um, and and it just lets you, it, you know, you can create scenarios that um, are unbelievable and ridiculous. And if you know, you sell them mm -hmm. properly, that's that becomes funny. You know, do you like playing the other side of that? No, <clears throat> not as much. No, I, I think I, you, the first show Eric and I did called Tom Goes to the Mayor it was a little cartoon. Mm -hmm. I was the beta on that show. My character, Tom. Yeah was always getting shit on and beaten up and um, just life destroyed. And I can do, I could, that's what I thought I was good at doing, sort of understated. And, but then as time went on, I found I could be bigger and like I had a good yell. I had a good loud you voice. You have a good comedy yell. You know? Yeah. You know, there's something so fun about playing arrogant. Yeah. Um, I also like playing submissive though. Uh, very much, but only if it's opposite somebody who is like really, yeah. who like I love to be able to believe that this person is really could be doing that to me. Yeah. 
Um, how do you discover a skill set of arrogant? Is you're good at that? Do you have any of that really in you? Oh well, I think m probably just because. Uh, Let me ask one more specific to that question. Yeah, as you got became became more successful and well more well accepted, did that make it easier to be that character? Uh, I don't know about that. I think just being around the right collaborators where I felt comfortable being that way with them and feeding off them made it more comfortable to perform that way. Uh, but I would say in my natural uh, uh, me, in my natural me, it's my autobiography. Is that um, real? Do you have an autobiography? Called it's yeah. It's called in my natural me. Oh, that's why are we talking yeah. about it? <laughs> it's on Audible. Oh, that's uh, awesome! Yeah, it's read by um, what's his name from Mike? Uh, Mike Sure? No, Mike Rutherford from the Mike and the Mechanics. He read it. Wow, it's a mix-up. I don't know who that is, but that sounds well. You know Genesis, Phil Collins band. Yeah, is he was he the he uh, was the, the guitar player. guitar player? Yeah, but they were supposed to be doing his audio book, and they got wait the a minute PDFs mixed up. But wait a minute, he got your book. He read, yeah. and he. At what point does he not know it's his book anymore? I, I, I don't think t towards the very end, because I keep my stuff pretty vague, and I do tell some tall tales about being, being in, in Genesis. In Genesis, right. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Small world. Um, no, I. I'm sure I, I have a bit of a you know uh, type A uh, self generating. Look at me. Is that a drink? This is a uh, me Italian. searching. My Italian side. Um, yes, uh, I obviously where I am in my life with other people, of course, Eric and other people have gotten, you know, I've made things happen by just working and and being probably, you know, pushy, not pushy, but uh, pushy. I, I, I get I, I'm the guy that s sends the email that says, hey, when can we? meet about this you know like w let's do uh let's set a meeting up like yeah that's a natural self-motivating yeah uh personality type that i keep that i'm that i am not like my characters in the sense that i start you know berating and abusing people again touching my head i wonder who it is this time um uh you know i i have good work relationships and, <gasps> with the people i that work for me and that I work with. So I, I'm not like my characters in that way. Um, do you want to, uh, and I'm putting you on the spot right now. Um, Where? Is it like a stain or what? There's a, there's a mark I have in front of the curtain. Uh, we sometimes put people in front of the That's curtain. That's a good place to do an audition. Yeah, I do self auditions there self sometimes. Tape, yeah. I do auditions there sometimes. Um, no, put me on the spot. Uh, for the next... 10 minutes could you uh be a little bit aggressive and shitty toward me yeah i can do that i can do that for you um 10 minutes 15 i was gonna say less but in podcast time that's nothing yeah so right, um it's 12 27 right now how about this we'll do a five minute timer and okay. then we could reevaluate at that point did you ever watch that um you know, when, when Ricky Gervais shows up at Gary Shandling's house? Yes, I don't remember. I have seen that. It's what, what, very, what is very it? uncomfortable. Is it a real thing? It's a real th It's a real thing. I think Gary Shandling was... I don't remember it. ...pushing it a little bit. He was... But he was... He was... You could tell he was not amused Who by was Ricky. It? Right. What um, is this? I, I just remember seeing it them together. It was this comedy special or some kind of thing, documentary that Ricky Gervais was doing where he was going around and interviewing some of his heroes and talking to them about comedy. Yes. Much like is happening right now. Um, I thought you didn't know who I was. <laughs> uh, that was quick. I I really thought you were talking about that you were saying I'm a hero years. No, no, I'm not. The other way around. Super familiar. Um, but you, ha you but haven't seen the sixth lead. I I read about it on Wikipedia. <laughs> I'm gonna text you some of my stuff. Great. Um, no, That's no, why I, I should have emailed you. I didn't want to text. I could delete your number. You know, I gave you that option um, just to let the audience in on what you're saying. Uh, let me give your phone number out. A block. That's not fair because you just cut it out. 
What? I, mean, you, I, I could read your phone number, but you, we're not live. You don't. You can't be the. They can't be the guy yet. I haven't started the timer. Okay. I don't remember now. Something about Ricky Gervais. Gary Shandling and Ricky Gervais. Oh yes, he yeah. did not. He, Gary Shandling. Gary Shandling was very. Was so, I remember this. Very uncomfortable. very uncomfortable. Yeah. I need your glasses off for this. I'm gonna go ahead and be the take a little. Give you a little bit of direction. I need to be able to see your eyes when you're oh, doing that's this. That's true. It's much better. With um. Glasses. Yeah, it's and it's actually good direction. You got to watch some of my stuff. <laughs> Set timer for five minutes, please. Um, I'm going to start this from the top, okay? All right. And that's all you need? This is the water? Like we're we're going to tape this now? Um, I mean, if you don't mind, do you, do you want to... Do you need anything different while we're... Um, I would love to piss before we start. Sure. Yeah, let me do that. Okay. Where the, where's the... Uh, Over here. I'm really excited to have him on. Uh, dude, um, created towel -y and, uh, what does he go? He goes, he goes, uh, cheesy poos. I want my cheesy poos. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll certainly find them. So look, I, I don't know if my publicist told you this, but I don't want to talk about like Tim and Eric shit or uh, like bridesmaids or any of that shit. I want to talk about my music and the stuff I'm here to promote, the podcast. And, you know, we could talk personal stuff and riff if you want and do, you know, I'm happy to talk about where I grew up and all that crap, but I don't want to go into the whole like nostalgia train. Okay. Yeah. Where'd you grow up? <sighs> Where'd I grow up? Allentown, Pennsylvania. PA. I went to summer camp in Pennsylvania. Great. Okay. Is this, do you want, I, I just, I don't know that I didn't get a chance to watch a lot of your stuff is this is this like loose back and forth mm -hmm. or am i should i wait for loose. are you doing so loose okay yeah did, did they send you anything of mine to watch no i googled stuff and watched um i can't remember who it was me i don't know who your guest was oh you watched one of my podcasts mm -hmm. i'm so excited to have you on yeah it's great to be here man do you that's one of the things I, when I go on stage, I open with that. Do you have how to get out of here at a certain time? No, no, I'm good. I'm just, it's, you know, compulsion. Just, I do the same thing where I check my cameras. Uh, so I saw a clip of you talking, shit talking Bill Murray. Yeah. It I'm came not... off a bit like, uh, like you guys have. I mean, we could go through, uh, all kinds of clips that you might have seen of mine, but I don't know if it's productive or interesting to go down that particular clip. How do you decide, like your instincts have been honed to like know what you think will be interesting? I assume you mean to the audience? Like you don't think the well, audience Well, first of all, to me, like I'm not interested in, rev in sort of right, right, doing right. a forensic study of like a random thing I might've said on my show four years Club ago. Club random. Club random, yeah. Which is ironic because that's, you have a club about random stuff. I did a spoof of a club random episode a few weeks ago. If you want to talk about that, we can. Okay. How do you know Fred Armisen? Fred, I've known, uh, well, again, I don't want to go back and talk about like the Tim and Eric days. I've asked to not get into that. But did you meet him during Tim and yeah, Eric or before Tim a, and Eric? No, I met him. He came on the show. But you didn't know him before that? No. How would I know him before that you know what i mean like i knew I, was, I knew who he was and i knew that there was like i loved his humor and i loved uh portland wasn't on yet but i loved his early early videos um but i don't know i just we just met and clicked and have you know kept in touch over the years and he's he's a friend of mine don't so. you ever work with people that are friends of yours before you work with them and then have them come on no i don't i mean 
I can't, I can't think of an example. I mean, I... David Spade? Often, have you ever worked with David Spade? No, I've never worked with David Spade. Kristen Chenoweth? Kristen Chenoweth I've never worked with. I mean, why don't we... I don't, I don't see the value in going through... Okay, we're good? I mean, we're just getting started, but that's five minutes. Okay. Well, you pissed for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Is Can I try? Like in soccer? What's that? Can I try? Uh, sure. Uh, so you I'm, say the, no. I'm the I'm the nice guy. I just watched you say. People that don't want to say no say sure. Sure. Yeah. And I heard that. Yeah. Yeah. And and I'm gonna listen to it. And I might revisit this later. No, I I. Uh, I know what happened. You were getting into a pocket. Then the, Forgive me if 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 you were already in it, but yeah. I felt like you were getting into it at the least. Yeah. And then I said, I want to go. And you already told me you don't like playing the opposite role, but you're a guest. I'd be, I, I'd be happy to do it. And that's an honest <laughs> thing. <laughs> no, I'd be joking. happy to I'm do it. Joking. But um, it is true. I get into almost a transcendental space when I'm when I'm getting into that flow. Yeah, yeah. Where I, I'm like, I'm very happy right now. Yeah, no, I even though believe I, me, I get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I get it. And I didn't. I, I forgot about the timer. And had you not, had you just said turn that off and we stayed in, I would have. But no, we could keep going this way. Well, can I get philosophical about it and not in character here because it's what a do bit. You guys of, think? No, it's a very uh, meaningful thing to me. As uh, I've been doing this a long time, and one of the there's this show that talks quite a bit about this show I do called on cinema and and that show t it gets very contentious very dark lots of dark subject matter that comes up on the show we did a murder trial for my character killed 19 kids at a music festival Fuck. it gets very dark it's very silly and absurd at the same time but the, this the very intelligent man was speaking about it and he said why are they, why is this funny to us and that's such a good Mm -hmm. thing to think about every once in a while. What What is the core of this? What is this? And he described it as this is, it's a very uh, animal. It's like a roller coaster. It's not like a roller coaster. I could explain that. I cut you off, but I could explain <laughs> well, that no, I'm, after. I, I, you, what he talks about is in nature and as animals, we are animals, we need to play. And play helps us mm -hmm. in a lot of different ways one of the ways it helps us is is understanding and processing the world and especially the dark parts of the world the the you know the things that what we don't want to talk about the death mm -hmm. sickness loss um heartbreak all these things that um that tend to bother us and give us you know all sorts of Negative problems feelings. throughout life and what, what we do, and not intentionally, I don't think we're sitting here <clears throat> writing down notes and saying this is what we want to do, but instinctually, we play with these ideas, and mm -hmm. we joke around about them, and we lighten them up. And for us, it's it's like what, what I do, I guess, subliminally or subconsciously to process how I feel about things is to kind of like, it, it, it comes out, as uh, as nasty or dark, weird shit. And as the audience, I think they are also uh, subconsciously reacting to being able to sort of process these dark parts of life and not take them so seriously. I agree with that. I've thought in different words that same thing. The analogy for the roller coaster was about how getting these negative feelings, these mm -hmm. scary feelings of falling, of, yes. of fear, whatever, but but from the safety net of- In a controlled of, of, environment, yes. yes. And uh, I don't think everybody subscribes to that. I think they could if they appreciated it. Mm -hmm. um, you can't joke about that. That's not funny because it triggers something and that's fair. People of course. Can, and, and, and know your audience and read the room. Yeah. Um, but from a completely selfish, and I use that word literally, like in a good way, mm -hmm. like for self, yeah. It's a way, yeah, of getting stuff out that's in you that you either question or that scares you or that that interests you in some way, not that you're condoning murder. Right. Um I I'm lucky because generally my comedy comes out in the form of characters and uh and so I my characters can be dark. My characters can say horrible things. 
there's other kinds of comedy where it's like, th- this is me speaking about how I feel about a certain issue. And that's when it can get complicated and, and maybe, you know, where if I, if it was just me speaking about how I feel about something, uh, you know, I would be more careful about what I say. Because, what do you mean by complicated? Do well, people say they don't know if you're joking or serious? Well, yes, or you, or you're, if, if you're, if you're more of a didactic comic who is. I've looked up that word many times and I forget what it means. It is telling you what something should be. It is, it, you know, it's, it's a, tr- like a truth telling comedy, you know, like okay. a, the, the, if George, George Carlin or somebody generally saying like, this is coming from, this is my point of view. Right. Not a character's point of view, even but though didactic means not a character or just means telling you a di- we could look it up. But didactic means definition of didactic. I always thought it was a dinosaur intended to teach, particularly in having moral instruction as an ulterior motive. George Carlin is a great call for that. Yeah. So, you know, I'm all I'm saying is it would be you get into more complicated territory if you're coming from the point of view of. This is me in my world point of view uh, talking about whatever issue yeah. comes up, right? You're saying you do this more through character point of view. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it can be, but of course, I understand the idea that certain things are triggering. And uh, I did this tour, this, I mean, this is a little bit of a tangent, but I just. Are you sure came, you want to take it? I, 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 only because it's kind of amusing. <laughs> Okay, I'm in. <laughs> Let's see how fast we get there. Set timer. Yeah. No, I had a there, I, this tour I just did, which the first half is my stand-up character, who's a very, in, a very, you know, clearly a character who says terrible things. Um, and then the second half is my music, which is not really a character. Uh, but I was playing a song, and I think I just was like, as a joke, playing a little bit of Imagine by John Lennon at mm-hmm. the piano. You love Kinda, the Beatles. I love the Beatles, yeah. You dress like George Harrison. So you're playing Imagine. And somebody, a few women left, and they told my merch person, they said, please tell Tim that that was a, we had a great time, but he played a song that... Um, triggered us because we were in a cult and they played that song every day when we were in the cult and they played it constantly over and over again so all i mean very weird right very weird experience weird weird experience or weird that that triggered them it is uh weird both it's i would say it's weird that it triggered them i mean i I understand it right would, would trigger somebody but there are certain things i guess the point being there's certain things that are just out of your control Correct. and that I'm not going to worry about. Yeah. But I do do like I do <laughs> a couple of nine 11 jokes in as my stand up character, which that, is a character who's making fun of a guy who, who would that's do funny. a nine 11 joke. Of course. And that's, those are the moments and they're not, they're pretty, I mean, they're dumb and they're not, I don't find them too offensive. The one is I'm struggling to, I was saying, telling a story about going I said, I walk in the 9-11, not 9-11, um, 7-11. I think it's a big laugh, right? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's immediate that that was not the right thing to say. Um, and then the other one telling a poker uh, story about playing blackjack. I say, I got two stacks of chips taller than the Twin Towers. And it's just a throwaway line. Yeah, but you're making fun of trigger words. A little bit. And I also think the first one is just an idiot. It's like a, a guy who has a bad brain. The second one, I think it's funny because it feels like this joke is so old for him. Uh-huh. He's had it for 25 yeah. years and he doesn't think he should change it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it gets groans as well as laughs. But I can imagine that there would be somebody in that audience that has a relative or knew somebody or, you know, that where that moment comes back up for them. So, uh, but no one said anything, and I think if somebody came out and said something to me, it would it would trigger me to smart trigger me. It would encourage me to think whether it's worth doing that. Right. So it's all like <clears throat> again, it's just case by case. There are um, you have a stand up special 
where you're it came out uh, two years ago, maybe. It, yeah, 2020. It's, it's, yeah, so um, I'm telling you something that is maybe unnecessary, but it feels nice to reveal uh, this to you because I had a, a feeling when I watched it, which is um, I uh, I do things my own way. I'm a little <laughs> off the beaten path, uh-huh. and I don't run into too many times where I'm seeing. I, I'm I could see people that do th- things better than me. Yeah, um, and that's great. That's awesome. You're so good at this. I do not have much experience watching peers, friends, or people I don't even know doing stuff where it's like, uh, why didn't I do that? Or mm. I do do that. <laughs> um, the only times it's happened a few times, and it has always been Fred Armisen. Mm-hmm. Always been Fred Armisen doing something that I am doing. Yeah. I don't think he took it from me. Right. I know I didn't take it from him. Right. Either he does it better than me, or I think I do it better. Par- right or wrong. Parallel I'm saying, thinking, yeah. Very, very specifically. Yeah. To where I think he's so funny. I stopped watching him on things mm-hmm. because I didn't want to not continue doing something. Because still, zoom out a little bit. Um, we have our own points of view. There's only eight jokes in the world anyway, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. But like, it still makes me feel like I can't do that. Um, I, fe- I could list the few times that happens and I don't want to. Um, it happened once with something with, with Bo Burnham. Um, and it happened with you. I have my own version of that character uh-huh. that I built from a defense because I was too scared to actually do stand up. So yeah. I make fun of it for maybe the first eight years I was doing it. Yeah. Um, I still love the character. I still do it, but I have, when I saw your version of it, I've had the, 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 the brain of the character I'm still comfortable with, but the way he is deciding to do stand up, I watched. I watched uh, so people tag me and they're like, "You got to see this. You'd love this." They think I'd love it because that's nice. Uh, I do something similar. I, yeah, that's I, a good use of the internet commenting. But uh, yes, that's a kinder one. Yeah, I couldn't watch more than five minutes, and I say that with 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 uh, all respect. Yeah, yeah. Which is fuck. Yeah, yeah. You're so good at it. <laughs> I do a different version, yeah, yeah. but if but for uh, I, I could see a lot of people saying it's not. And I've had to stop doing that thing because of it. Um, I don't know what my intention is other than maybe putting that out in the world, which is saying like, I know there's some similarities or something. Um, You're so good at it. And I've been a fan of yours for since Tim and Eric. I I know Tim and Eric. Um, uh, I've seen some other stuff that I, Tim and Eric is what got me into you. Yeah. Um, So. Gulp, gulp, gulp. I have a, a special that um, I have three different specials I'm working on. A traditional stand-up special, uh-huh. which feels like the hardest thing to do because what's the point? What's the fun in this? Yeah, yeah. you know, if if I fail, then I'm yeah. gonna feel bad about myself. Yeah, and then there's two others. One of which I've put aside. You fucking Adam bombed it. Um, yeah, you Adam bombed it. Uh, at least the first seven, five seven minutes. Um, but I want to talk about it and and. It would have been better for me to, to have watched more of it to talk about yeah, it. But yeah. I want to talk less about the special and more about something that you have a superpower in, which is uh, being a character, not playing one. Does that resonate with you? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> there is a, a, I've given the analogy where I sometimes feel like I have a Mario star and I could be yeah. wrong. I very much probably am in many ways, but I'm invincible. Everything yeah. I do is right, not because it's funny, but because it's honest to this character. Yeah, it's yeah. real. It's real. Like you, you, you're you, yes. in a pocket, funny or not, hopefully funny. Right. That's where jokes come in. Yeah. But living in that is is why I do stand up. Um, and I feel that I'm happy to say 20% of the time now. Yeah. Um, used to be very rarely. Yeah. I don't get the high of, of the show and the people and the, I mean, it's I'm grateful and it's fun, yeah. but- being able to be in that, that's where I connect very much with play is what we were yes. made for. Um, could you talk about the feeling of being the thing, even though it's crafted? Sure. I mean, I just did, uh, I think, 27 shows in a row, maybe two days off. So this tour that I just did, I did it every night for 40 minutes and then did the music for the the remaining time. So I'm very 
familiar with the feeling of doing it. Uh, and you have to do the character first, right? Yeah. Because once you reveal yourself, you can't do no, that. Yeah. Even though people know you're joking, you can't become the thing. It's also be- like the show, we called it the Two Tims, and uh, the, the stand-up is very much uh, part of the, I think, the draw because that that special did very well mm-hmm. and people know the character. Adam bombed it. Sorry? Adam bombed it, I'm just saying. Adam bombed it. Uh, for a YouTube special, it did pretty well. Mm-hmm. Like but um, uh, but it it the sh- as a sh- as a show holistically, that character you you it ends in failure. You know that that set and en- ends in failure. The set is a failure. It's it's funny and it gets laughs throughout, but it's not a good feeling. Mm-hmm. Except only that laughter is a good feeling, and I think people. It's not a good feeling for the viewer or for the character for the playing ca- him. For uh, well, for the audience, I think the home the, audience. I'm talking about the live show, but we could talk about the special. I'm talking about the show that Go I just. On, did. I'm sorry. Go on. Um, and what when the when the band comes out and the music starts, that is a little. People are a little tenuous about that at first because they're little, not sure what. What's they're not happening. sure what if it's all a joke right. or if it's some of it's a joke. By the end of that half it's triumph it's a very it's a genuinely good feeling from everybody the audience and the band and me um and so uh but back to your original question about uh being in that character it's uh, it's uh, a very natural feeling and a very natural and fun place to be there is structure to it there's every night it's not it's more or less the same. The mm-hmm. big chunks of it. I can't believe I said chunks on a pod. pod I could believe it or podcast. I could take any. I could literally take. I'm gonna start talking up. about chunks. But believe when he said it. There's a number of things that happen every night that work, and I know they're gonna work, and they kind of work consistently, which is a nice feeling. It's. I don't want to be completely unmoored and uh-huh. trying stuff every night, but we. I do play around with stuff and move things around, but. Um, a f- one of the last nights of the show, my bass player, Ellie's good friend who didn't really, he knew Tim and Eric, but he didn't really know the comedian that well. I was hanging out with them during the day before the show backstage. And I'm a pretty, especially with friends of friends and people I know well, I'm pretty affable and polite and interested and, and, you know, trying to welcome somebody into our little backstage world and, and, we had a nice chat and I was, you know, just being myself as much as I can and friendly is a quicker way of saying that. You had me at affable. Yeah. Affable. Just a happy to be here and happy Come you're on here. In. Come, Come on, on in. in. Come yeah, on in. You want something? Yeah. So he sits and watches the stand up guy and he was like, I can't believe that that's the same person. Mm-hmm. Like it, it was a total for him. It was a total transformation of, Seeing, he's like you, and you were that guy. Like when during that set, I didn't see that other guy. You know, it was a full, total uh, transformation from him. From, from this is just what he was telling me, and I love that that can happen. And uh, I think I know there's a little bit of it is hair. I slick my hair back and I put on this stupid leather jacket, and and it, there's a costume element to it. HMU. There's no, it's, I do it myself. A <laughs> big, big squirt of gel. That's the way Back we do it. She goes. Take your shoes off show as well. But, um, there, yeah, there, like I was saying earlier about the, 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 uh, transcendental experience of getting into a, a, a you know, flow of, of an, of a character. You, I am totally that guy during those 40 minutes. I mean, I'm look, I'm still like, there's almost a, two brains going on because there's two me. Tips. There's four Tims now because... Well, three. Yeah, three. There is the inside mind that is very aware mm-hmm. of the audience and where where the monitor is so I don't trip I'm gonna over interrupt. it. I'm going to interrupt. So there's, in, in this section where there's only two Tims, there's the aware one, which is you want back a mind, right? Because this is what's showing here. Yeah. But this still has to be there. How much as the aware one, if there's a hundred attribute points and the aware one is 20, I'm making this up, but uh, because when you're really in in, in it, this person is there more, but you have to be able to walk and know where the walls are. Yes. As the awareness comes over, right? As you now have 40 and then the character then goes down to 60. 
Uh, is there a certain point where you don't feel as present? And with that, I ask, mm. when you ha you have your pillars. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you need those because you there's a you, that's I'm the start craft. calling them pillars. OK, we we'll call them pillars. Yeah, I like that. OK, you have these pillars, which mm -hmm. you need because you're building something and this yeah. holds it up. Um, but if it's all pillars as well, where then which then would bring the the aware brain bigger and the then the character less than like, is there conscious choice to make sure that you're hopping from pillar to pillar? So there's that room to play that allows you to stay present. It's both things. The self-awareness and the too much structure gets in the way of being the character as opposed to playing. Would you agree with that? I would agree. And I would say that the best nights are the nights where there's 10 or 15 percent of stuff I don't know is going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Happen. So you're in the audience basically as well. Yes. So I think of it. Yes. And a couple of times when I'm stifling laughter because mm -hmm. uh, and then the hard part and the work is 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 if if I do like I there's this bit that I won't get into deeply but a bit where I'm trying to remember a, a card a series of card uh blackjack mm -hmm. hands at this and I'm telling this horrible story and I'm trying to you're fumbling over it I'm fumbling over it t calling the dealer the bartender mm -hmm. say I got a six no I got a seven I got a he got the jack I got the six and no hold on back it up I, yeah, yeah. bartender and and I get into this just, you know, quicksand of nonsense with numbers and saying the wrong words. First time that really clicked, about half of it was fully spontaneous brain, you know, uh, not in control of where it was going, just enjoying the ride and just yeah. watch and seeing how far I could push it, seeing how long I could go until the audience really got sick of me doing this and riding that wave of them laughing and realizing how far this is going right and me, me laughing at it and my tour manager who's you part laughing of the show, uh, out loud the character laughing i think there might have been a little like slip of a i don't want know, to get too far off track but you don't want to do that i don't want to do that right but there is a nice like we talk about let it like the little wink when it happens when it happens it, as long as it's not jimmy fallon and horatio sands on saturday night live like where that becomes the entire right gig, you're okay if you earn the laugh. If 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 there's a little release of the of the pressure valve, I get pissed when it happens to me. I, I, it, do, it doesn't happen very often, and certainly when I'm on doing it every night, it really doesn't. But once it happened, and I think the audience loves that yeah. because the, we all know this is a show. You know, we all know this is. That's um, that's where that's where I find it's. Of course they know because they should. Yeah. But if if we if I if if there's a reason for them to know, it makes this aware side kind of take over a little yeah. too much. Yeah. And it makes it harder for me to perform. I would say out of the twenty eight dates, it happened once, and it was barely a thing. But but the the hard part then is okay. I did that flow state kind of mm -hmm. magical uh, run that felt perfect. How do I do that again? Right consciously and uh and, and that takes a little more maybe discipline tell me what have you figured out a ways to do it because like I, I, mean, I said i've gotten up to 20 percent. maybe it's so hard to do it all the time i i i think uh talking about it with luckily i'm traveling with this great group of people the band and my tour manager jp who really care about that part of the set and really know it and talk and so i talk to them about it after and before the show yeah and and they remind me of because sometimes I will walk off and not remember a lot. So they of remind stuff. you when you did when you call them the bartender or yeah. when you when you couldn't remember the number. So you don't have to remember what numbers to mess up. No. But just remember I got to come up with numbers on yeah. the spot. Yeah, and that, like that's something they remind you as a as a tool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I don't. It kind of happens naturally just through talking about it. Or I'll ask, like, th there was something really good that happened. What, what, what was it? And then we'll all try to remember. Give an example of something that you forgot what it was that someone, somebody remembered. Uh, I, 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 I can't right now. Okay. I can't because I don't re keep stuff in my head that well. Yeah. Um, Does it come back though when you're doing it? Yeah. Like, do you feel like your character has a memory that you don't, and when you're in the character, things kind of come back? I think that's true. Yeah. Isn't I that wild? True. It is wild. And I, I do have this crutch where I do have a little, because part of the joke is I'm always looking at my notes. And so on this tour, I had a little index card with eight or like 10 
you know, keywords for each for 10 keywords total for the yeah. whole set. And it never changed after the first night. It became more wrinkled and corrupt and smudged as the tour went on. And I never really need it. I just need it as a joke to be yeah. like, as if I don't know what I'm doing. But it all gets <clears throat> lodged in there and mm -hmm. the character takes over. And uh, there are always a few times when there's I'm part of the conscious brain takes over and says, uh, where are you in this? Where, what's next? Ah, and then second later, I know what's next. Yeah. And then I do it. <laughs> but, it's such a specific craft yeah it's not just being a comedian and i'm not glorifying the thing i'm saying it's just a it's a very specific version of being a comedian or performer yeah that you're so good at well i'm also like i'm a terrible memorizer which is like a memorizer of lyrics or of if i'm get if i get cast in a show or a movie or something i find that very challenging it takes me a lot of work to memorize other people's writing uh yeah. But I, I somehow can retain all the basically the same it's the same thing. Like if I had written this out as a script, I'd have to perform it basically the same. Did you but, used to maybe even still uh, struggle repeating material? Well, I don't because I do it on this tour. I do it every night. So I'm saying, was that something you, like you learned or is it always oh, easy to repeat stuff? I always uh, I never had a problem with it. I learned early, early on, like when I first tried to do comedy, uh, before Eric and I were really making anything, I was living, I moved to New York and I was like, I'm going to try comedy and I stand up and uh, stand up comedy. And I didn't know anybody. I didn't know how it worked. I just loved comedy and I really loved Andy Kaufman at the time. And, uh, and that's I love Tech. I don't know what else. Did, did he do anything else? I know he did other shit. He did weird <laughs> M Mighty Mouse stuff, but <laughs> yeah. I love Taxi too. <laughs> he, yeah. loved, he did the Mighty Mouse cartoon, yeah. Yeah. But um, no, I loved him, and I thought I would be that kind of comedian, a very conceptual, weird comedian, which I guess I am. What attracted you? Oh, I don't know. It was so okay. weird. So, I, I mean, I should have, I should know, but it's very weird and character-driven dri and conceptual conceptually uh, interesting and um but i loved you know christopher guest i love uh lots of different things but the point it's a funny thing to validate just so you know yeah, I, yeah, I know there's, yeah, there's yeah, other yeah, yeah. i like christopher guest yeah, I, yeah, I, love, I don't only eat mcdonald's right no but the point was i i got a i found an ad in the paper for i think the new york comedy club or some shit you know literally i think that's what it was called and it was a Tuesday night bringer show. You got to bring five people. They got to buy two drinks. Mm -hmm. Nine o'clock. There was it was a two hour show with five minute acts. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of people coming through. Yeah, and, 24. Yeah. And what I did it once and I thought it was okay, but it was very rough and very weird. And but Co my real quick, real quick, real quick. Yeah. I actually know about this. And have a clip of it. No, you don't. I do. We'll cut to a clip. Thank you very much. My name is um, Tim Heidecker, and I would like to sing uh, one of my favorite songs. How many roads must a man walk, walk down before? They call him a man. Yes, and how many seas must a white dove sail before she sleeps in the sand? Yes, and how many roads must a man? Oh, I can't remember the one. I thought that I had to do a different set every time I did it, mm -hmm. and. So I got very, I did why? it a few more. Why? I thought it was lame to repeat myself. Yeah. Did you feel like a liar or you just thought it was I lame? I think I did. I think it felt like that's what disingenuous. I was. Yeah. And, uh, but obviously that's not what you're supposed to do. Correct. What you're supposed to do is like, I mean, it's probably good to like try a few different things and, and see what, what works better than, uh, 
But if I had an idea for a sh- also the idea of like, and I still feel this way if I do a show. Ooh, I hope I hope these people haven't seen this before. Of course. Because I mean, for comedy especially, it's like it's all about surprise. And if you know the jokes, why would you why why would you laugh the second time? Well, most audiences do not agree with what you're saying. By the way, yeah. I subscribe to that as well. Well, the, I I I'm probably wrong about it. I think you I've don't talked about this to so many people. You don't remember everything. Plus, they like seeing the thing that made them laugh. That's true. That's true. Rewatching Game of Thrones, for example, yeah. which is so much funnier the second, <laughs> third time. Um, but yeah, so I did that a number. I did that about six times. I kept Different trying sense. new things. <clears throat> I don't think it got better each time. It was the first time trying something weird that kind of worked, kind of didn't. And I stopped. I just said, "This is too much. I can't keep coming up yeah. with material. I don't. I don't have anything else." And uh, and luckily, Eric and I started making stuff, and then. I went that way, but, um, but now I see the total value in, like I, I've been doing some things in town locally that are not that character. And I'm like, let me just try to go up and talk about, I have some funny things to say, yeah. you know, keep it, play a song, say some funny things, be myself, see what that feels like. It's very, very weird, but also kind of fun. And, and I'm like, yeah, what you do is you go out and like do the same shit. Uh, until it gets better and, and you change it, you f- fuck around with it. And that's obviously what you're supposed to do as a comedian. I want to talk to you a little bit about a theory I have. Um, for eight plus year, I've been doing stand up since 20, 2007. Um, so, uh, for most of my stand up, more than half, I was that, uh, I wasn't a new set every time, but m- mostly, yeah. uh, I had, mostly basically when something worked i'm like i did it um and here's my theory nobody comes up with any jokes we don't write jokes they all exist already yeah i look at jokes as bricks Uh uh-huh in any moment the pun exists the joke exists. the neil brennan podcast blocks (laughs) that's blocks uh which i don't think is what this is i think that's therapy based i don't know i don't know um but jokes people have said it before you you have your own point of view sure and there's all these different versions that go into building Mm -hmm. the dna of this but basically i look at them as bricks and like if there's a joke they all exist just could you see it Mm -hmm. and if you could see that joke oh you could take that brick right and the craft of stand-up is taking these bricks and building these foundations and building a special out of it um and there's a craft in knowing how to build these. What bricks go with what? What bricks are worth it? How do you make these bricks stronger? Where do uh-huh. you stack it? There's also a skill set of finding the bricks. And for a while, I I was not getting good at building anything because I wasn't building anything. But I got really good at finding the bricks, seeing right. the jokes. Sometimes you see it, you take it, you don't use it. Sometimes you use it and you shouldn't have. You throw it, whatever the analogy, the, the analogy would be. But like, I got really good at finding them. Uh, the last few years in particular, I have been really hyper-focused on, even though I see all these bricks, just, you know, only use the ones that, that or continue to keep trying to make this thing stronger. I think there's something to a person, for not for better or worse, but a mind who has this feeling of, I feel like I'm lying if I keep, if I use the same bricks again. It's not fun. I don't feel present. I think that does develop this skill set. Like you said, you're not good at memorizing things. Maybe that was part of the defense for not wanting to memorize things. Right. Even though you can memorize your own stuff, yeah. relatively speaking, you got so good at the instincts of, I, I know I'm going to find it. I'm right. not worried about it. As long yeah. as I'm present, I could see these bricks. Yeah. And that, I think, is a superpower. And then there's the other thing, which is developing an act, which right. is important. But I I was really hard on myself for a while of like, I wouldn't repeat stuff. Yeah. Um, all my friends and peers were now becoming like, first getting specials and now becoming like very, very successful. And like, cause they're doing something that I thought I didn't want to do, but I realized I don't know how to do. I'm too scared to do. Yeah. Um, well, it's very rarely, I mean, the material itself almost is secondary to who's delivering it and the, the audience wanting to be or hang out with that person for however long, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? whether it's like, uh, it, it's, you know, in a, in a, a more genuine 
stand up person. It's like getting to know that person. Yeah. Or in the case of my character, it's like a fascinating person to watch fail, you know, watching, you know, the three stooges. But when I watch you try and fail, um, when I watch you uh, deconstruct stuff, when I watch you poke fun of stuff, it doesn't, I'm not just seeing a character. I'm seeing a guy, a, a way the guy whose mind works. I'm seeing a guy who thinks life is silly. Yeah. Uh, I'm seeing a guy who likes to treat things as high stakes when they're not because he thinks it's silly when people care so much about that. Mm-hmm. So, and also I'm maybe being a little defensive right now in like defending why I have been the way I am. Yeah. But also like even the characters we play, the, there's a reason we play them. And I think that does show a lot of who a person is in the same way, like yeah. when somebody on social media posts, you know, a very uh, uh, exaggerated version is when somebody posts a beautiful picture of themselves and makes a quote, right. that has nothing to do with the picture. We see something in this person. We don't yes. just see them beautiful. We, we also see them scared to say, Hey, look at me, even though that's right. what they want. And I think that's a very specific voice that is worth nurturing. Excuse me. <laughs> and uh, I also think it has a lot to do with, a certain type of comedian that I'm attracted to at least and love being, which is the, 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 who I am is in the back. Yes. I also find him more engaging. Yeah. I mean, I mean, my favorite stand up comedians, uh, would be people that are in, in a mode of character. Uh, Steve Martin, Albert Brooks. What do you think about Martin Short? Marty Short, not, he's too much. Yeah. No, but no. <laughs> you know, Steve Martin, Albert Brooks, uh, you know, Norm Macdonald, these are character. Mm-hmm. They're when they're on stage, this is very much a character. Uh, they're doing, they're doing bigger, <gasps> bigger ideas. Uh, and it's conceptual. It's not, uh, here's what I had for, you know, here's what's you bothering say. Here's what, what I had for Here's breakfast. breakfast. Yeah. yeah, it's fine. It's not Richard. You know, Richard Lewis is a character, uh, but maybe that is a little more um, like a guy talking about himself. And it's an exaggerated version. Larry David's a character. Larry David's a character. But I mean, those guys, if you look like I just recently, and I had never seen it before, Steve Martin's uh, first comedy special. Mm-hmm. It's on, it's him at the Troubadour. Mm-hmm. It's on YouTube fantastic Mm -hmm. and it's like there's no there's no material like there is there is very much material i should say but the it's it's a meta it's him talking about doing the show it's him talking about the audience and about you know it's very very silly and it's very self it's very aware of the ridiculousness of entertainment of Mm -hmm. how silly this is and yeah he's one of the him and andy kaufman are like and are like kind of the first guys to 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 point that out i think you know? andy does it in a way where um he needs people he needs to believe it's real through yeah. people believing it's real yeah. for the performance to work because there aren't his 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 performance is based on being uh imagine if like this is a real thing yeah steve is not steve wants everyone to be like you know look at this arrow oh I'm a wacky yeah. crazy guy i mean yeah it's so well, it's, what are it's the like, syno- what's synonymous about them to you? Oh, uh, very similar to me. Very similar. Uh, they both come from a place of I understand. I'm taking for granted and hoping that the audience is as media uh, media literate as I am to know the to what know I'm that calling back without establishing this is an uh, this is irony. This yeah. is an uh, I'm being ironic in my silliness, and I think Steve did it much broader and more accessible in a much more Mm -hmm. winking way, much more obvious way where Andy was way more an art, artful, both artful, I should say. Mm -hmm. And I'm fans of both. I'm just saying, I think Steve Martin became way bigger because, and I guess probably there was a lot of people that just maybe took Steve Martin's stuff at face value as like almost like they would without a doubt yeah that's uh, that without a doubt what's his name uh the the gallagher you know like um but where at the root of his you the the pure understanding of his comedy back then is you have to and same with andy is you had to have grown up with the ed sullivan show or you know the the old 40s 50s 
60s form of of entertainment mm-hmm. presentation. If you if you didn't have that, which you know the baby boomer generation all had, they all grew up in front of television. Yeah, you don't know what they're referencing. Then or, the, the, you know how silly that was, and and now they were here to make fun of it. But I do agree that not everybody uh, has that kind of palate, and then they still saw Steve Martin being silly. So yeah. it worked on at sure. best multiple levels. Yes, yes. I used to do. Uh, a joke, a lot of different versions of stuff, but I was making fun of stuff that it took me so long to realize some of these things. Why isn't this working? And they don't know the thing I'm making fun of. Yeah, that that is like a, a very simple one is like there's so many simple comedy devices. I'm half this and I'm half this. So I'm, I guess, you know, I'm a little bit, of, you know, mm-hmm. and I would do half and half things. Right. But if, I'm still, people don't know that's a device. Sure. So what does that mean? You yeah, know? I mean, it is a problem, I would think now, is that we're, uh, we're there is not, there's not like a one cultural experience we're yeah, all having. the well is way deeper. Yeah, and diversified and spread out and run thin. You know, if I look at like my news app and like it somehow, for whatever reason, feeds me People Magazine you know, in the Apple News thing, like un- if you keep going, it suddenly get I get People magazine articles. I don't know who most of the people they're talking about are. You know, it's they're drawing from Instagram right. influencers and reality stars and stuff that I don't have any awareness of. So it 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 must be a little hard now to have a common ground to speak about as a comedian. You know what. I have found is uh, how much more I, I've really started to respect setups more. Um, like just finding clever ways and quick ways of getting exposition out. Yeah. Um, and establishing w- without explaining a device, using it authentically right. to kind of set up what it is. And, and it's just opened up a whole new aspect of my writing for, for stage where like sometimes I'll say stuff that I, I judge myself for doing. Like I'll be doing certain bits that I'm only doing to establish the device. Yeah. And But I'm like, I have to be the character to do that thing. Otherwise I'm like, I wouldn't really do this. And I'm judging myself way too harshly, but it, is, it has forced me, I, I was, I'm also become aware of how self-indulgent this is and we don't know each other and I'm talking about this, but I'm having a good time and I like it. So yeah. I apologize if this is too much. I'm good. But once I got to the point of recognizing how much I was not building and I was just taking, I then was forcing myself to show up more authentically as me. Right. And I got bored. Yeah. Um, so well, I, it's a, it's a, it's great self-realization because <laughs> Why would you want to take the precious time that is this performance, this experience that you get to share with people and make it about you and be yourself? Why not get to, but why not play? And why not use that, that stage and that microphone to be, to live outside of yourself? Well, that's why I think both of those things are necessary. If the bricks are the jokes and the mortar is the, the, the point of view. Right. Um, and I've found a fun place of being able to be the character to, the way I'm doing it, but to still put me in it. Yeah. <coughs> and I wonder if that's a coincidence that you end your set as you, and maybe you don't weave in and out, but you still have to do both. Um, also, I hope you can remember that question. I have to, I have to blow my nose. Go ahead. I'll answer it while you're in the other room. No. <laughs> I'll be able to hear it. <laughs> but I'll be right back. Um, <coughs> Carpet. Hardwood. Rugs and luxury vinyl. The second half of the show is is me playing my songs. I'm able to to clown around a bit, talk to the audience much more closer to me. But again, we all talk about identity and me and self. I'm still very much on stage and mm-hmm. trying to entertain, uh, but it's not in a full mask of a character. Um but and when I play the music, and a lot of the music is rock and roll, and I am doing my best Bruce Springsteen, my best Mick Jagger. You know, I'm rock. I'm rocking out because it's fun, but because it's also you know, a, it's another shade of character. There, it's a bit of you want to play that up. It's not. Um, it's just performance. You know, it's not. 
that complicated or anything. How does it get revealing, so, but how does it get so down at the end of the first act? How how do you mean by that? Because because the comedian's well, the, struggling in in the sh in that set. Uh, there's a big big payoff that's supposed to happen that doesn't happen because of mm -hmm. miscommunication with the right. theater, and you know it's just a fa this big thing that he wants to happen at the end right. doesn't happen, and it's a failure. It's funny. It's not a genuine failure. It's a I know, yeah, I understand planned planned disaster, but. Um, I just think it, it's not something that really reads literally or anything, but I like that. I think emotionally the audience, there's an irony, there's an, there's an ironic distance to that first half, right? That happens. What were you saying? There's an ironic, there's an ironic distance that is like too, a little too cool for school. If you're going to really love that set, you know what I mean? No, say that differently. I'll say it exactly the same. I could just, I did, but I, I heard you. I just no, didn't get it. I, I think that there's an, there's a. You're talking from the audience's point of view. Yeah. They must be what in order to Too enjoy cool it? Too cool for school. Too, I mean, cool and hip and, uh, and there's not a lot of feeling, even though feeling is all kinds of things. Feeling is, you can laugh at something that's ironically detached and that is a legitimate feeling. But there's not warmth. There's there's in which ironic part? in the first half. Understood. It's clever. It's you know awareness of what I'm what I'm lampooning. But the second half has genuine warmth. That I'm was that a conscious choice? I think it's uh, a byproduct of what I love to do. And mm -hmm. there's songs that are sad, and there's songs that are personal in the set that I'm, 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 you know, that I make clear and there's joy in playing music with other people that, that we can't, you can't ignore if you're watching it. Like we are, we are enjoying each other's company and, and, you know, so, and it, there's still silliness and laughter and joking around, but I think there's, there's a, you know, I, I, what I love about the show is that they're like all, I think, things that I love. There's heart and and there's l laughter and tears. HLT. Yeah. At the beginning of this podcast, you said that, uh, you know, uh, there's a sock word and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But then you said that <clears throat> you make sure that much like when someone comes into the green room of your show, I'm going to be calm. Yeah, that wasn't the word you used, but affable. The way, the way I took it. Right. Affable. And I haven't talked this much in a while. Gulp, gulp, gulp. I can love talking, but. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> we'll, we'll edit a lot of those out. <laughs> um, but like you're very affable right now. Thank I'll you. even say calm. It's important to be able to be that because like. Why gamble all the time and why perform? It's draining all the time. Yeah. But like, is this something that you got to as you got, I'll either say older or more experienced? Yes. You made a choice to come in and be like, hey, man. As well, I think I've always uh, done that before recording. I mean, before uh, before something was going to be right taped or whatever. I've always tried to be a human being with people. Uh, and hi, nice to meet you, you know, or whatever you do to in polite society. Nice, yeah. I don't know. I'm not like this weirdo, like, don't look at me. So, but early in my career, uh, when it came to like doing a podcast or an interview on TV or whatever, there was a, there was more of a intention to make that as funny as we could. Mm -hmm. And often that meant being awkward or uncomfortable or you know taking my big swings yeah my favorite talk show appearances were always charles groden you know if you if I've you, seen you him. if you if you there's a great great i think it's the greatest talk show single greatest talk show appearance of all time with johnny carson and groden yeah it's which called, by the way he was great in clifford he was great in clifford the if you want to see, find it it's it, you can look up do you care about anything and the premise of this little interview with Johnny Carson and Charles Grodin is Charles Grodin needling and pressing and pushing Johnny Carson 
asking him, do you care about yeah. anything? I have, I have, I have it's, seen them. It's like one. a work of art, in my opinion. Yeah, it's it uncomfortable. 10 minutes. It could be uncomfortable. It's, you could. I didn't know. I I discovered. I watched Johnny Carson interviews all the time. Yeah, and I didn't know any backstory or the relationship. Oh, yeah. And I saw it, and I saw, <clears throat> I saw Carson being able to take it. And at the time, I didn't know. I assumed there's probably something I'm missing at yes. least. I didn't know what it was, but just seeing him be able to Carson. The importance of a reaction shot, you know? Yeah. To see Carson being able to swallow this and makes us be able to watch it. Stifle laughter. I think Carson was in heaven during that. I thought he he just was it like, like yeah. he goes, you know, he knows what's happening is beautiful, even if the audience doesn't. But the audience, this is again, back in, in the day, back in this, there was a, more of an awareness of this as a style of comedy. Maybe than there is even now. I think there was an appreciation for it there was Charles Grodin was very well known. Mm -hmm. He was a movie star almost. I mean, I don't know if to say a movie star, sure. but he was. But that only was, happened because Carson was playing along. Yes. As opposed to sure. playing it real. And he had done the show before and he had done similar kind of. Yeah. He, he had a reputation of being a sort of antagonistic. And even it's funny in that show, Carson says we get we get letters saying people, why is why is Charles Grodin so mean to you? You know, and so back it's like the analog version of YouTube mm -hmm. comments where there's people at home watching who are writing notes complaining that this guy's who are missing the yeah. joke, but the audience in the studio, maybe a little more like media aware or high, you know, have knows what the dynamic is are seemingly enjoying the hell out of it. There's also something about a live performance with that, where they don't audience at home has to wait until they cut back to Johnny's camera to see if he's okay. Yeah. But like the during, audience can see it during yeah. those times. I, I know that like when things are awkward, people are looking at the voice of themselves. Yeah. So people in the studio are going to be looking at Johnny and seeing that he's taking it, which lets them take yeah. it. And he's fighting and he punches back in uh -huh. fun way and sort of much more traditional, like punchline-y kind of ways, but uh, it's fantastic. And that, so when we were doing, interviews or I would do certain interviews and the, the tone was, it was understood that like, okay, most of the time we would talk about it with whoever was doing, you know, whoever the host was or the producer. And a few times when we were, there's a, a great compilation of all this press that we did for the movie billion dollar movie we made where it was a lot of people, you know, you do those junket kind mm -hmm. of things where it's like some random person from E1 entertainment you know, that hasn't seen the movie that is just there to fill a report or get assigned something. We just looked at that as like, I can't keep talking about this movie. There's nothing to say, you know, there's nothing interesting to say mm -hmm. about this movie. Let's just riff and be funny as much to, for each other mostly. So that became, so then like maybe five, five I don't know, six years ago, whenever 2017, let's say that. I stopped caring about doing uh, doing that all the time. I just thought, I don't know. I can't keep coming up with angles on how to goof on talk shows or mm -hmm. interviews. And also, I had a body of work that people knew and could talk about. You yeah. know, so it's like all right, I, I, it's a lot easier to just sit here and just chat and talk about um, you know anything you want to talk about. So. But then I did that and there had been so much of that other stuff that I would see the, all the reactions. Well, I've never seen him out of character. I'd never. And and that keeps happening. And this will probably happen on this one. But we're going to voice over a lot of your stuff. <laughs> uh, but it's now it's sort of like, I don't know. I'll try to be funny. I'll try to hang out and be interesting to talk to. It's a good name for a special. I try to be funny. I'll try to be funny. <laughs> As a director, how important is it to you to sometimes not let people in on it only so you could get a more authentic reaction out of them? Oh, very. Um, you know, we used to do that more. Uh, I still, we still do it. Um, I think as an actor, it's, I mean, it gets a little uh, ethically interesting, but I feel like as soon as you're on set, it's like you're, you should be expected expect to be on camera, expect to, to be filmed. But um, as a director, do you notice that some people's skill sets are different than others? Yes. And if there's certain reactions you need from people? Now, if it's a scripted piece, obviously, yeah. otherwise. But like... No, we would try to game that a little bit. And 
sh- shoot a lot and get look for. Mo- I mean, we're always looking for moments of authenticity. Some actors, like Fred or Zach Gal, you know, so some comic Will Forte people that we worked with a lot are masters and can give you authentic. John C. Riley can give you authentic, yeah, comedic performances and re- authentic reactions. Thank you. Perhaps you. Uh, uh, not all of not everybody can some people are like you know funny and talented and and but maybe not super authentic yeah it's a dip it's the it's the two voices we would also cast people that were s- strange looking or interesting mm-hmm. looking or like what bbc does like with bbc does. i find that a lot of bbc shows uh-huh they cast people they're like oh i believe that that person's just ugly enough <laughs> i don't watch the bbc i'm not allowed we have a, a very patriotic, uh, my wife's very patriotic. Borat, bad Borat yeah. impression. <laughs> my wife. Um, so we, they are not gifted in the in the uh, art of acting as much as some of these other people are. So you would manipulate them or manipulate the situation right. to get a, a reaction that felt that was real, it wasn't a performance. I have a, 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 a something I forgot about for a while and I just remembered and maybe I'll take this out because I talk about ideas on here and then it's like I haven't done them yet so why talk about yeah them? yeah but if I you know it just is making me think of uh, uh I wrote a script uh a love story um like a not really a rom-com there's some a, a, a rom-com sure uh a short but a good one um, the, ten, the intention would be for it to be I a good one. I appreciate it. But um, yeah, it was, a, it was a real one more than a good one. It was the proper devices without making fun of them. It was just here yeah. is a short film that is a rom-com and it's sweet and there's mm-hmm. a nice meet cute and they there's an obstacle and it's resolved. Just mm-hmm. it, it was fine. I don't even remember it. It doesn't matter what the script was, but the the, the tone of it is mm-hmm. here's a re- this is a real thing. Um, and I wanted to cast it uh, with non-actors um maybe uh uh i was originally thinking like student films type stuff put a lot of production behind it um and then i this other idea for something um that's maybe it's not the most appropriate but i I was watching uh uh i was watching um have you seen what's the movie with tom cruise where it's a part two and there's planes top Top gun Gun. have you seen it? it's an easy one have you seen it yes funnier the second time as well by the way (laughs) There's a, a moment in there where where Tom Cruise and I don't remember the actress's name, but he fucks my the, my audience. By the way, will will you might not know it, but is a that is that that little quip you said is a very direct reference to Billion Dollar Movie. But continue. I so think I saw Billion Dollar Movie, but I don't remember what what is the. I'm not going to get into it. Let the audience enjoy that moment. Sure. They don't need to. If they want to find out, you can rent the movie. Smart. We'll put a link to rent the movie in the description. Um. But he fucks her. She she the plane. Opened, what's that? The plane? No. <laughs> no. We don't call planes female. Right? No, that's no ships. No, that's ships. Correct. Planes are typically men. men. Yeah. Um. The 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 female in it. Uh, what's the actress that Tom Cruise fucks in Top Gun Two? Kelly McGillis. Kelly McGillis. Good. Um, so Kelly McGillis opens the door, um, and then Tom is on his motorcycle doing his thing. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, perfect. Um, and then, uh, he's probably going to go home. He's like, he's going to go home and jerk off. And then he looks and she looks back and she goes like, you know, and then she walks in and the door stays open. So we all, everyone in the audience was like, Oh, cause we know that she's saying the door is open as a right. metaphor Come for her on legs. In. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he goes in and I thought, how crazy would it be? Were 45, 50 minutes into this movie, if he goes and he fucks her and instead of just close shots of his strong back and then just her going like this, yeah, you know, maybe a nipple. Kelly McGill's, McGill's right. nipple would be a great Twitter um, uh-huh. parody account. Yeah. Anyway, if it showed them actually fucking, if it showed penetration, full, full penetration. for like, you know, yeah. 20 seconds, it showed him, su- <laughs> showed her sucking his cock. It showed him like fucking inside yeah. of her. And yeah. you, you see his dick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we know the man does his own stunts because right, of people love talking sure. about that. Yeah, yeah. Do you hear the story about a mission? One of the Mission Impossible's where the stunt coordinator's like, "You can't do that." And he's like, "It looks like we need to find it." You know. Yes, yes, yes. I've heard, I've heard them all. So uh, 
that inspired me because like it's wild to see like here's a genre of something but then you see penetration and then it becomes a pornography but it's not a porn we're just right. seeing the fucking yeah so i guess for that you have to hire porn stars and how well could they act but like i basically just want to get some porn stars some student some student right. actors um and not make a not you know the tone is not satirical it's i'm treating it and i'm to the best of my i'm trying to get the best i can out of these people yeah um you get people who aren't that experienced. We get good musical score. The coloring, we'll probably do it on Da Vinci. Mm -hmm. I'm talking like seriously mm -hmm. coloring. Stuff, yeah. Fucking, sucking, covering right. pussies, this kind of stuff. Uh, but just a rom-com. And like, this is my, like, I really- I love those. Uh, like, I, I mean, you'll never do it. Okay. Uh, you obviously I love the these. I love conceptual ideas. Like, like I want to do an idea that- uh, like I'm watching this show Hijack with Idris Elba. That's like a, it's a pretty well done. James Bond. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, but I don't know if that's happening. But he's, uh, it's a right down the middle like thriller kind of twenty four style mm -hmm. kind of action thriller. Very well, I liked it. It was pretty good. I want to do a show with that tone, uh, and that sense of urgency without without any actual sure. events happening. Yeah, great. You'll never do it. I'll never do it, but <laughs> I would love to see that. Yeah. I'd love to see that. Yeah. Um, so I like, I like those kind of, I like uh, another idea of like, like Tom Cruise, you have a movie where the first 10 minutes you think this is a movie about the Tom Cruise character and then so he gets hit by a bus. I'm well, sure maybe that has been done. The other guys. Is that what happened? Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg. Have you not seen it? No. Oh, that's right. I did see that. Yeah. Now that's a comedy that still remained a comedy. Right. So it's a little bit different. Right. But yeah, I've, I, I also, uh, Love the idea of of something that's very genre specific rom com for the first act. Mm -hmm. Somebody is murdered or killed. It's gruesome, and not only does the movie become about that, the tone of the movie entirely changes right. into this thing too. Yeah, um, you'll never do that. It's almost it's almost like uh, condescending. Well, I wanted to take like the original Star Trek show and re edit it into a absurd, uh, you know, nonsense piece of art because it's essentially the same background, same music same costumes so you could make you know you could re-edit that to uh -huh. become not and someone may have done that, that i believe you'll do yeah that i could maybe do that you could do yeah because the clay's already there yeah, it's just so sitting in front of a library yeah. or a computer um all right well we'll wrap this up um we have to yeah but uh I, before we do i want to ask if there's anything that you want to plug no good um and uh, i have to take a polaroid of you okay now, I'm going to get close for the Polaroid, but I will hold my breath while I do it. Okay, that's fine. Um, uh, oh, we'll put a, a, a link to your T-shirts uh, in the description as well. That'd be great. Thank you for coming over. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. Uh, that was great. This was fantastic. I enjoyed. I would stay here longer if I didn't have to go and have to pee. And well, now that I have your phone number, uh, and if you'd like, I could email... Uh, I might ask you back on in the future. Okay. Um, you do that? You, you've done that before? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, we have some people that have come on a couple of times, some people that are staples staples to the show where they, it, they, it just exists in the Tyson universe. Right. But I have a few ideas of stuff that would be a fun episode that I'll, I'll shoot your way. And if you're interested and available, I'd love to have you. If not, no obligations. I appreciate the time that you've given we'll me. We'll have to talk rates, but that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you're making a joke, but I I do pay. Uh, I give I give people fifty percent of the advertising money, and I have three oh. ads in this, so this oh. is gonna be nine thousand dollars, forty five hundred dollars. That's um, music so I, to my ears. Yeah, I really do. Yeah, so I appreciate we'll take that. care of you. Um, appreciate that. That's really why I'm here. Uh, go ahead, check out pod.snaps on Instagram if you want to see the Polaroids. I haven't put any of them up yet <laughs> because I have to go back to the first ones. I have to. Yeah, that them sounds and, like a mess. But eventually, people will go. Theme music. Scoop. Uh, two things. We're going to do this Polaroid and then a quick pickup of you. Blabbity blue.